amen. These are the times we live in, but God is our very present help. I want to talk tonight to you from this subject, at the mercy of the merciful. <laughs> at the mercy of the merciful. At the mercy of the merciful. And I want to use tonight one primary verse from Job 13, and that's verse 15. And Job 13, 15 says this. He says, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain mine own ways before him. Somebody ought to say amen to that. Let me read it again. Though he slay me. <laughs> Somebody shouting in their living room already. I can see you. My God. Yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain mine own ways before him. At the mercy. Lord have mercy of the merciful. Uh, I want to uh, share tonight. I, I, uh, I thought it would be, it's amazing how the Lord kind of works with me and uh, lays something kind of flat on my heart and uh, I, I can't shake it. And, I, and oftentimes those things, excuse me, that he lays on my heart are the things that I need to, to share and to teach. And, um, and as I began to initially kind of peruse this particular text, uh, I began to kind of see what the Lord was saying and requiring of me to say to the people who would be sitting here watching tonight. And uh, I, I don't ever assume that anybody knows the story. And so we here have here a a really, really, really remarkable story, Old Testament, of actual events that happened to a man named Job who was found by God to be upright. Now, he wasn't perfect, but he was upright. And our perfection, as you know, is found in Christ. But you should walk worthy of the call, right? Uh, that means making every effort to live a life pleasing unto the Lord. And uh, there's a, a contemplation of Satan to God, right? Chapter 1. And Satan, as he must do, comes to give an account unto God. And God says to him, where you been? Going around trying to devour someone. And he says, have you, have you been snooping around Job's life? Come on, stay with me. Satan says, yeah, I can't touch him. You've hedged him. And, and uh, we, we see that through this uh, through this conversation, God expresses his great confidence in Job to lower the hedge and allow the enemy to do everything but kill him. Are you with me? Now, let me just pause there because I just said something that you might have missed that you needed to hear. I said God expressed his great confidence in Job that he allowed the hedge to be lowered and let Satan come in. And could it be, could it be that some of the things that we experience in our lives that you are experiencing right now, could it be that something you are going through right now that you feel is unfair, that you feel is unwarranted and you feel like you don't deserve this, that how could God let this happen to you? How could God let this come your way? Could it be that through allowing you to go that, that God is expressing his confidence in the fact that even in the midst of great turmoil, you won't leave him. Ah! God, I want you to I want you to let that sit on you for a few seconds. See, see, very commonly our response is why? Why me? Why I got to go through this? Why through that? When when God expresses his confidence and he says, I, I know Job's heart. I know that with all he has. That if he didn't have it anymore, he still would worship me. I know that with all the success I've given him, if I took him through a season of challenge, a season of loss, a season of dismay, I want to express my confidence that I know my child 
And maybe, my brothers and my sisters, maybe it is that through your circumstance, through your valley, through your great trial, that this is, in fact, God's way of expressing exactly how confident he is and that you would never leave him nor forsake him as he would never leave or forsake you. Wouldn't it be an amazing thing to get the revelation that I can't believe that God actually has that much confidence in me? Wow. When you when you are faced with heavy loads and great trials and tribulations, and then you are reminded that the word says that God would never place more upon you than that which you are able to bear. Something ought to, some green, some light bulb, excuse me, ought to go off in your mind and say, God must be trying to show me how he really sees me and how he sees me is much better than I see myself. And it is my assessment, brothers, that early on, Job very clearly understood this. You see, not shortly after his children die and his cattle, it's almost as if his ter the territory of his life begins to shrink by the attack of the enemy that God allowed. Lord, help us. What, 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 what do you do when, when it feels like and the, all of this prayer of Jabez and all this belief for more, but it feels like the, the, the territory of your existence is being marginalized and not growing? As opposed to being frustrated, even when his wife says to him, look around, clearly the Lord is not pleased with you. And she says to Job, why don't you curse him and provoke him to strike you down as well? And Job says these beautiful words that I think we cheat people out of by only quoting at funerals. I think they are applicable all the time. He says to his wife, shall we rejoice at the good that God does and not rejoice when it's bad? He says, we brought nothing into this world and there is certainly nothing that we will take out of it. The Lord has given and the Lord has now taken away. Bless. Can we be at the place where our fidelity and commitment to our God is set in such a firm position that we could say out of our mouths when something bad happens, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. It was his to start. And it was his to take. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to just pause here parenthetically because somebody's pulling on me tonight. I want you to know that God wants to use these next 25, 30 minutes to turn your mind so that you might see all that you are going through, all that you are facing that you might see it through this lens that God only allowed it to happen because this is an expression of his confidence that I will bless him at all times. You ought to square your shoulders. You ought to say, wait a minute. I got some faith in me, right? You ought to say, my God, I didn't even realize that God had put that much in me that he would allow me to go through this circumstance and expect that I will Keep my head held high, looking to the hills from which cometh my help. Saints, I've come here tonight to tell you, you can never, ever, ever lose when you put yourself at the mercy of the merciful. This progression goes on in Job, and it would be a great uh, place of study for you for the next couple of weeks. Don't rush through it. You got to take your time. This is the poet, first book of the poetry literature section of the Old Testament, the third section of the Old Testament. And it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a heavy lift to kind of understand. But you see his friends come in and they are convinced that Job did something. You, 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 you had to have upset God. You, 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 you did something, Job. You, your hand, you sitting here like you Mr. Goody Two Shoes. You had to have done something. And it is chapter 13 tonight where we kind of land and begin to see that, uh, I could argue, we, we know that Job, Job never, ever turned away from God, but some things can tug on your heart. They can begin tugging on your heart. And after hearing all of, all of this, uh, you know, determination and, and, and um, things that his friends had made, and they were just, you know, they had so much to say, Job decides that he's going to respond. And uh, you'll see uh, that in chapter 10, he kind of bemoans his condition a little bit. He's, he's a little frustrated. And 
chapter 11, his friend uh, Zaphar accuses him, say, you had to have did something. Isn't that something? That sometimes when you're going through that even outsiders can't believe that it's just an expression of God's confidence. There has to be an assumption that surely you misstep with God. But I, I, would, I would dare you to change your mind tonight and realize that God does not let weak ones go through these types of things. God, God does not let the frail, the flighting and the faithless go through these types of things. He lets those like Job, who he know that they will shout with a full belly and they will holler if they don't eat. And I want you to know tonight that this is about turning your mind around so that you might see this as an expression of God's confidence in you. Job gets to 13 and my uh, African-American Jubilee edition Bible says that he begins to defend his integrity. Uh, and it is more so a defense against his friends. It could also be seen as against God. I want to work that 15. I'm going to give you some thoughts here in a minute. But uh, as I've now kind of brought you to this point, I want to share with you where he was. And he says in 13, he says, hold your peace. He told him, shut up. I'm tired of listening to y'all. <laughs> Just stop it. Leave me alone that I may speak and let come on me what will. Who God. That's 13. 14 says, wherefore do I take my flesh and my teeth and put my life in my hand? Job is now, stay with me, he's now at a point to where he is willing, watch this, he is willing to go to God to figure out exactly what is going on. Now, you and I both know that historically speaking, and this was written long before we lived, that it has always been seen as an affront, right? As a level of disrespect, how dare you go ask God what he's up to? How dare you go and, and wonder about this thing? But it seems like Job just got himself together and said, uh, wherefore do I take my flesh and my teeth and put my life in my hand? Then verse 15, listen what he says. If he kills me, <laughs> if I, oh God, thank you, Jesus. Huh? Come on. I, I want to talk to the bold and the daring tonight. I got a good friend of mine, uh, pastors uh, uh, in uh, Kissimmee, Florida. Uh, and he's he's uh, about 12, 14 years younger than me. I uh, love him like a little brother. And I, uh, he asked me a question and uh, we were at a camp meeting a couple years ago. He said, Diller, what we going to do? And he goes on and asked me and I looked at him and I said, I said, hey, man, I don't have all the answers. And he looked back at me. He said, I'm a millennial and that answer ain't going to do. You're going to have to do better than that. <laughs> he said, I need and answer, big bro, please don't cheat me out of no, no casual, you know, don't, don't just send me off. He looked me in my eyes and said, I need an answer. And I, I, this way, this way we might have to separate the wheat from the tear because I'm wondering who could be so bold tonight like Job and say, if he slay me because I came to him. Then I'm just going to have to accept that that was the best thing that needed to. Though he slay me, yet will I trust. If that's his decision for me going, I can live or I can die believing that even in that God did not do me wrong. He says, but what I but what I will not do is I will not. Uh, I will, excuse me, not avoid going to the one who has all the answers. And I want to ask you this tonight. I want to ask you this tonight. If you believe, right? If we believe, if we see it in scripture, if we purport at the highest level that God is this great and merciful God, why would we not throw ourselves at the mercy 
of the merciful one. <laughs> God, I want to I want to know him like Job knew him. Job said, if it be in fact that I'm going to need mercy, then at least I ought to throw myself on the, at the mercy of the one who has more than anybody else. And if he slay, listen, one of the commentators, he says this, he says, Job made this statement when he was in a terrible time of pain and suffering. He had lost all of his children. He had lost his wealth. He had lost his health and his friends were of no help. His wife offered no support. And in fact, in Job 2 and 9 tells him to give up, curse God and die. And Job felt as though his life was over. Watch this, church. The only thing that was left was for him to die after having lost everything else. But as Job says, even if God did slay him, he would trust that slaying him was the best thing to do. Oh, y'all, come on. Do, do you trust God like that? Ah, God. The man says, if I, if I go to him and he strikes me down for questioning him, I'm going to have to just trust him in that. Because I believe that in this thing that is causing me to need merciful, if I'm going to throw myself at anybody, I ought to throw myself at the mercy of the one who was most merciful. And maybe he strikes me down. But maybe, just, just maybe, going to him whew, is where I get my breakthrough. Oh, God. Saints, can I ask you a question tonight? Are you in need of mercy? Is your circumstance so damnable that you just looking around, scratching your head, saying, God, how could you? Well, I urge you tonight, like our dear brother Joel, if you're afraid, I dare you tonight. I dare you be like my young millennial little brother who looked me in my eyes and said, no, I need more than that. <laughs> and if it's wrong, if it's a misstep with God, do you believe that he'd be merciful even then? Do you believe that he's loving and patient enough that even if going to him was a misstep, that like Job said, if he slay me, that even if he struck me down, I'd probably say, Lord, that must be what's best for me. See, our trust don't, don't go that far in. And I want to, come here, come here, don't shrink down. Sit up on that couch, sit up in that chair. Don't shrink down, stay with me. I want to know tonight... Are you willing to throw yourself at the mercy of the merciful one? Are you willing to take the risk? How, how dare we think he only wants to spank us? How dare, if God wanted to strike you, he didn't have to wait till you came to him. How, oh God, if he's going to get you, he's going to get you. He's omnipresent. He knows where you are at all times and he has access. So clearly, if he has not yet, it means that he is desirous that you bring what you need to the one who got everything that can fill you up. And tonight, I want you to make up in your mind that I done lost everything. I, Job said everything gone. I have nothing less to, else to lose, but I have everything to gain in that the merciful one would receive me into himself. Look at 16. Job uh, says, though, excuse me, um, at the end of 15, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. 16, he also shall be my salvation for a hypocrite shall not come before him. Hear diligently my speech and my declaration with your ears. Behold, now I have ordered my cause. I know that I shall be justified. Who is he that will plead with me for now? If I hold my tongue, I shall give up. I shall die. If I, if I hold my tongue, I shall, I shall give up the ghost. I got to do this. 
I must. I must plead my case. And maybe I go and I'm wrong. But if I'm wrong, isn't he the merciful one? If I misstep, if I go to him and express my frustration and watch this, and he has to chastise or correct me. Isn't that what he does? If I'm going to take a risk, shouldn't I take the risk with he who is most merciful? Though if he slay me, I'm still going to trust him because although I hate everything I've been through and I'm upset about everything I lost, I do not believe that God has yet wronged me. Oh. And so I must go to him and whatever will be will be. And I trust that however it ends up, it will be fine. But I have to go. And I'm saying to you tonight, stop talking to people who don't know. Stop calling people who don't know. Stop throwing yourself at the mercy of people who need mercy themselves. But throw yourself at a loving, patient God who, though at times can't be understood, can always be trusted. Though who at times seems peculiar, can always be trusted. Though at times, come here, you don't want to say it, I'll say it for you. Though at times feels unfair, can still be trusted. And I want to say to you tonight, he's the one. And you know what? You got to make up in your mind that if he get mad for me coming, if he get mad for me asking, at least his anger lasts only a moment. Ah! <laughs> oh. Job says, though he slay me, yet, listen, New Living Translation. He says, God might kill me, <laughs> but I have no other hope. So I am going to argue my case with him. That's Job 13, 15 in the New Living Translation. That's Pastor Debbie's translation. I love it. If he killed me, I had no, who else going to help me? But if his mercy kicks in, oh God. if he sees his child as confused and scared, and his anger doesn't rise. His mercy does. Maybe that's the thing that changes everything for me. I'm, I, where my risky saints at tonight? Oh, God. Who? I promise you he's not waiting to whoop you. Really? He's a prodigal father. You know the story of the prodigal son. He's looking, saying, come here. Are you done clowning? Cause I got something better for you. Are you done doubting me? That's what happens. So I want you to throw yourself at the mercy of the merciful. Write these three thoughts down so I can pray for you. Woo! Is this helping somebody tonight? Help me put in the comments. Say you helping me pass if this helping you tonight. Because 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 many of us, we need a Hebrews, I think chapter four moment. Where we come boldly before the throne of grace. You're running the other way. Where are you going? Touch yourself, say, self, where are you going? God is the other way. The throne of grace, why are you running away? But boldly, oh, see, there it is. Job, boldly, though he slay me, I'm going. If it's wrong, he just gonna have to forgive me. I don't know, no, I don't, I don't have no other hope. I'm going. I need to know what's going on. My family, my kids, my health, this world. Lord, you got all the answers. And if I'm wrong, I've thrown myself at the mercy of the most merciful. And, and my prayer is that even if, even if he takes me out, well, it wouldn't be wrong. Oh, God, 
Do you know he wants that? You do know he wants that, right? I know people have told you other. But I see here, the Lord wants to speak. You get down the end of Job 38, 39, 40. Oh, the Lord talks. And he speaks clearly. Write these three things down. Throw yourself at the mercy of the merciful. Number one, I'm going to really help somebody tonight. It's simple, but you need to hear this. Number one, do not be afraid to go to God. Oh, what Job done taught us tonight. Come here, come here, come here, come on. Do most of us, come on, if we sat and assessed ourselves right now, what part of us kind of be like, I love him and I know he loved me. Do you know that in Christ, the whole point, come on church, come here. The veil was rent. The reason Jesus died was to pay our debts and give us access to the father. Oh God. If it be that, that God sent Jesus to die so you could come to him. Now, why are we scared? You gonna tell me that God sent Jesus to die so that I wouldn't come to him? We spent the whole Old Testament not being able to, y'all. The new covenant is here, which says, come into the holies of holies and sit with me. Don't, do not be afraid to go to God. Come on, say self, do not be afraid to go to God. Come on, say it again. Do not be afraid to go to God. One more time. Do not be afraid to go. Though he slay me, I'm going. I'm going to plead my case. And I'm sure I'm off base. <laughs> God is definitely going to correct me. But I don't have no other help. I don't have no other hope. We're about, Lord, in Jesus' name, here I come. So I'm saying to you, imagine that you could have known by now. <sighs> I'm out of time. I got to go. Whew. First Corinthians two, write it down, study it, right? Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither hath it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has for his people. Next verse. But God hath revealed it. Oh, God. Unto the spirit. You got to read that verse. So don't be afraid, y'all. Yeah, you probably get corrected. Yeah, you probably we've been seeing it wrong. We're going to go plead our case and God's going to be like, oh, that's how you saw it. But but who else who else can 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 redirect us? Who else can clear it up? So number one, church, please do not. Jesus, don't let Jesus have died in vain. Come on. Even if you wrong, even if you fell on your face, come boldly before the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy. I think most of the time our God's issue with us is that we made clothes out of leaves because we was naked. We hid. Whoop! God, y'all don't hear that. Oh, I cussed yesterday. Okay, come on in here because he don't want to touch your tongue. Right? Who else going to help you? Throw yourself at the mercy. Woo -hoo. Of the merciful. Number one, do not be afraid to go to God. Right? We see that. Though he slay me, I, I, will, I will maintain my own ways before him. Here's number two. Approach the Lord in faith. Woo! You got to go. Come on. Write that down. Number two, approach the Lord in faith. Come on. Approach the Lord in 
faith. Look at 16. He also shall be my salvation. <laughs> when I go, I might be bogus on some points because I'm saying, how could you kill my cattle and my kids and put these things on my body and got my friends talking crazy? You don't know what you're doing, God. I'm going to get corrected because his ways are above our ways and thoughts above my thoughts. But that's why I'm going because I need him to clear it up for me. I, I, mis I misinterpreted it. I misunderstood it. And I need the Lord to help me. So, but you got to approach him in faith because you got to go and say, even if I'm off base, behold, he shall also be my salvation. <laughs> the end of 16, he said, a hypocrite wouldn't come before him. <laughs> Hey, I ain't perfect, but I know one thing. He know my heart. And if I was playing, I, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even be doing this. Hear diligently my speech and my declaration with your ears. Behold, now I have ordered my cause. That's verse 18. Listen, I know I got him. I'm about to run out of here. I know that I shall be justified. Ah! <laughs> Job said, oh, God, I ain't got it all together, but that's why I'm going, because he going to make me right. He going to show me all my wrong. He going to show me where I got it wrong. He going to show me my, my thoughts that was off, Ed. I know that I shall be justified. <sighs> I know, y'all. I know that I shall be justified. Y'all see that? He says at the beginning of 16, he's going to be my salvation at the end of 18. I know that I shall be justified. So not only do you uh, do not be afraid to go to God. Number two, approach the Lord in faith. Go to him saying, I don't know all the particulars, but I know I'm in the right place. And I'm here to throw myself at the mercy of he <laughs> What do you get when you need mercy and you ask it of the one who has more than anybody else? How do you think that works? I could tell you it works out for your good. That's how it works out. So quit running in the other direction, pouting and mad, saying, since God since God says you want to do that, huh, I'm going to go over here and do what I want. I rebuke that lying devil in your ear tonight in Jesus' name. You will not turn your back on God because he took a little bit from you. No, you won't. You will not pout. You will say, I'm going to him. And if it gets worse before it gets better, though he slayed me, yet will I trust in him. If I lose more before he start restoring, I know he's still right. So approach the Lord in faith. Here's number three. Number one, do not be afraid to go to God. Number two, approach the Lord in faith. Number three, inaction will cause missed opportunities. <laughs> Let me say it as I say it a lot. Inaction will cause a loss. L-O-S-S. Of opportunities. Here's, here's, here's what I want to tell you so I can pray. Look at 19. He said, who, who is he that's going to plead with me? Verse 19. You know what he's saying? If I don't go for myself, who going to go for me? <laughs> God, I can't. Y'all ain't praying for me. <sighs> huh? Who? If I don't, because see, oh, thank God for intercessors. But you do know your intercessors have times where they doing this too with God. <laughs> so who? Huh? Who is he that plead with me? Who going to argue with me or for me? Who? Who who gonna who, who gonna stop me from doing this? I ain't, I'm not I'm not fussing with you. I'm not. No no. 
I got to do this. And if I don't, my inaction, my lack of action, right, will cause me to miss opportunities. End of 19, he says, if I hold my tongue, I shall die. If I say nothing, I will give up the ghost. And maybe for him that was physical and maybe, maybe for you, it is things will die. Opportunities, doors, shifts will die if you don't throw yourself at the mercy. Oh, God, of the merciful, who shall plead with me? I got to do this. I, let me tell you something. Here's what I want to tell you tonight. I want you to decide that I'm going to take responsibility in my life in getting to Jesus and figuring this thing out. Some of you, it's been a rough patch. You was in a smooth sailing season. This thing is just all of us, right? But we, we got labor for the Lord. That might be fasting and praying. Huh? huh? Come on. Definitely on a corporate level, but I'm talking to you personally tonight. I got to, I got to, I got to go to the Lord and see what's up. Right? And I'm confident that even as I plead my case, that there will probably be some stuff about it that I got wrong. But who better to plead with than he who is most merciful? So do not be afraid to go to God. Approach the Lord in faith. And I want you to know that inaction will cause missed opportunities. Let me read this so I can pray for you. I want you to kind of center yourself. I think this prayer is going to be really important tonight. After Job did all this fussing, it could be said he, he may have toppled a little over into self-righteousness. But he was wise enough to know. After God corrects him, you should read the end of Job. The Lord says, where were you when the foundations of the world were laid? Surely you know, because you're talking to me like you got it all figured out. I love this one part the Lord says to him. He says, when it is not snowing, where does the snow rest? When lightning is not striking the ground, where does, where is the storehouse of lightning until I tell it to strike? Surely you must know because you got your whole life figured out and I'm God and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so Job hears that and this is what he says, 42, 3 through 6. Maybe you can study this later. Job 42, 3 through 6. He says, who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore... Job says, therefore, have I uttered what I understood not. <laughs> By the end of the book, he's apologizing to God for questioning God's activity in his life. 42, 3 through 6. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore, have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me which I knew not. Here, I beseech thee, and I will speak, and I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto thee. Last verse. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, Lord, but now my eyes seeth thee. Now I see clearly. Wherefore, I abhor myself. I am disappointed in myself, and I repent in dust and in ashes. Read that, y'all. I didn't make that up. That's, that's where he got to when he felt really vindicated early on that I am righteous and I, and surely he was. But he realized that God know way more than me and I had this thing wrong. And you know what? Maybe you're in 13. You're feeling it. I want you to get this revelation before 42. <laughs> The Lord, Job went through it then so that we could get it now. And tonight I'm urging you to throw yourself at the mercy of the merciful. The Lord sent Jesus so that you might be able to come to him. Please, please, I beg of you, exercise that right and go to your father. Our forefathers and foremothers of Old Testament only wish that they did not have to depend on a high priest on the day of atonement to go into the holy place for them. 
first offering for themselves, then for the people. They wish they could have gone in themselves, and Jesus has made that possible for us. So do not be afraid to go to God. Approach the Lord in faith, and I want you to know, in action, if you don't do nothing, if you don't seize this moment, it will lead to missed opportunities. Father, we've been challenged tonight. I've been challenged as a teacher. But that's what grows us, changes us, thrusts us into the next realm of revelation and, and opportunity and activity. Tonight, we acknowledge that you are he who is most merciful in the heavens, the earth and beneath. Therefore, we make up in our mind that as individuals who stand in need of it, having situations and circumstances, pain and suffering, loss, that sometimes seems unbearable. The Lord says he knows that it feels unbearable, whoever I'm talking to, that we should come to you who can help us the most. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice tonight that they would come boldly to the throne of grace, obtaining mercy in their time of need no longer afraid to sit with you, knowing that even the failures that they try to hide have been washed away by the blood of Jesus. And Lord, let us approach you confident like Job in both 16 and 18 that I know he will deliver. I know that he will justify me in even the wrong that I bring to him. And Lord, let us not miss, let us not see things die, opportunities die, because we fail to move into proximity to talk to you about all the things going on around us. Thank you that we can throw ourselves at the mercy of the merciful. Lord, save somebody tonight. They don't know you. Let them pray. Lord Jesus, save me. I repent of my sin. And I accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. And I believe that he rose from the dead. Now fill me with your spirit, the powerful Holy Ghost, and put me in fellowship with your people. In Jesus' name, amen. We 